Hello viewers, welcome to today's video. In today's video we will be overclocking some of the graphics cards that we have and see if we can get the best out of them. So the one that we will start with is the 1066GB graphics card. Currently the MSI Afterburner has stock settings applied to it. So now we can see, now we can move them around and see how that influences the mega ashes on the back. So firstly what I normally do when I overclock the graphics card is I take away the auto on the fan. I set this to about 80 or 85 the speed on the fan just to make sure that there is enough fan speed there that it doesn't have to catch up if I try to push the card a bit. I just note that these are done at your own risk. You might just break your card while you put in the wrong things or you might damage your PC. So, all at your own risk. The first thing we normally do is we move the memory clock all the way down as far as it can go then we apply it currently the 1060 6 gigabyte is sitting at 16.06 mega ash let's see how that changes when we move it to minus 502 on the memory clock and if that does anything to ash rate of the 1060 so now we can see just going down to minus 502 on the memory clock does not really do much to the 1060 if we move it away from zero so let's see what minus 250 does you would think that it would be sort of in the middle between the first amount and the last amount which was almost no difference at all but let's see if that does anything to it so there you see minus 250 gives you 17.34 where you would think it would be in the middle of the 1606 and the 1604 but it doesn't always work that way it looks like it's a funny curve here at the minuses with the memory clock now we'll see what it does with the plus side if we go on to the plus side of the memory clock so let's go to 500 and see what that does. So there you see 500 gives you 19.14 mega ash. So this card performs very funny. If you move it down from zero, it goes up and then it goes down. And if you move it up from zero, it goes up and we'll see if it goes down on the other side also. We'll see how far we can push it here. With this being a 1060, the maximum you can go is plus 1000 so let's move it off that way and see what happens see what 750 does when we apply it see if it crashes or if it still maintains the plus 750 here gives us over 20 mega ash with the 1060 so let's just see if we can push it and see if it will fail if we take it to the max 1000 is the maximum that it can take let's see what happens if it bombs out or not so pushing it to the maximum that MSI afterburner allows on this card did not bomb it out flashing at 21.52 mega ash so currently for the memory clock that is the highest it can go on the mega ashes However, it is done at 112 watts. So if you want to reduce your wattage, then maybe, well, you know you're not going to bomb it out in this system with the limitation that MSI Afterburner has. But I don't feel that comfortable with leaving it that high. I'll probably reduce it, but let's see what the other controls do and how they affect it. So the next one we're going to look at is the core clock and how that changes it. Currently we're at 21.52. Let's see what happens if we move the core clock all the way down. To minus 400 is what it allows on this one here. So minus 400 on the core clock moved it down from 21 to 19.78. So let's move it back up a bit and see where we can get to. Let's move it to the minus 250 range and see what happens there. 
we apply that setting. Does it go back up? Does it go down further? Because this card has a funny curve. So minus 250 on the core clock has increased it slightly to 21.53 megahash. I think that's the highest we've had so far on adjusting these ones. So let's just see what happens if we make it a positive value and not in a negative values. But with the core clock I wouldn't go up that high with the positive values. Unless it indicates that it can go there or it indicates that the mega ashes do keep on increasing. But let's see what happens if we just make this 100 for instance. And see what the outcome is then. So it looks like moving it from minus 250 to 100 did not really do anything. Still around about the 21.52 mark. Let's see what happens if we make this 200. And we apply that. Let's see what happens. Yes, it didn't like going that high. Now we're back down to 250, minus 250. And just waiting for it to reset everything so we can continue with the test. So now we're back to 21. 52, 53 ish thereabouts. So now we're gonna drop the power a bit and see if that drastically decreases the hash rate on this card. So let's first move it to 80, see what that does. That is too much or it's just right. So moving the power down to 80 did almost drop it with one full mega hash. So let's move it halfway and see what it does at 90. See if that gives just better results. So it does look like those are around about the best that we'll get out of this card. If we don't really want to push everything to the max, we could leave the power limit at 100%. I don't really like doing that. So even at 90 and the core clock minus 250, memory clock at 1000, which I'll still slightly reduce. They don't really like leaving these things at the maximum levels. Because you don't know if uh, 1010 is going to be the tipping point. So I like to leave some room where things can go slightly wrong, but they still don't crash. But you can get 21.46 mega hash at these levels currently. So we'll still decide which ones will go on finally and move them all up and down and see where they end up in the end. But this is the basic process that I normally follow to see what is the maximum mega ashes I can get out of it. I'll also see if I can drop the power a bit because 106 watts I think is a bit much for the, what this card needs to take. Then I normally move the fan back to auto as well. Just to make sure that with the specific curve show you there we enable this specific curve where if it's lower it runs at 40 and as soon as the temperatures goes up the fan also speeds up by itself that way we don't waste a lot of power while it's quite cold and then the fan uses whatever power it needs to to regulate it later on so that is what we'll apply for this specific card. And then we should see the temperatures go down from where it's currently there at 47 degrees. And then also the power might go down a bit, but we'll still play around with these ones to see. One mega hash is not the end of the world, but if I can move these ones lower, then I prefer to do that. I'd rather sacrifice a mega hash here and maybe get a couple of months or a couple of years extra out of the card. Other than trying to push everything to the max the whole time and then obviously shortening the lifespan of the card. So for this video on the 1060 6 gigabyte, this is what the best clockings is that I can do for it on the T-Rex Miner. And well obviously some miners do differ. So if you use different algorithms then obviously all your figures is going to change but for this which is the one that's currently one of the most popular ones your card can currently do that I hope you enjoyed the video like it down below 
remember to subscribe and have a nice day.